Good morning and welcome to Business Morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwagu. Well, if you are coming into Lagos through the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, you are bound to face some slowdown as the construction work on the Kara Bridge has started in earnest. Nonetheless, there is no cause for worry as the traffic regulators are on ground to ensure smooth flow. However, there is need for motorists to be patient and careful as well as obey the traffic rules as they drive. Now, going out of Lagos isn't that bad. The heavy traffic is more from the people coming into Lagos. Let's just drive safe. Now, the Nigeria's gross domestic product grew by 1.94% year on year in real terms in the second quarter of the year compared to the second quarter of 2018, which recorded a growth of 1.50%. Now, data just released by the National Bureau of Statistics, however, shows the growth seen in the Second quarter 2019 is an increase of 0.44 percent points when compared to 2.10 percent recorded in the first quarter of 2019. However, the second quarter 2019 real growth rate indicates a decline of 0.16 percent points. Now, during the quarter, aggregate GDP stood at 34.9 billion naira in nominal terms, an increase of 13.83 percent over the performance in the second quarter of 2018 and 9.8 percent over the preceding quarter. Now, the report indicates that the performance observed in the second quarter 2019 follows an equally strong first quarter performance and was likely aided by stability in oil output as well as the successful political transition. Overall, a total of 15 activities grew faster in the second quarter of 2019 relative to last year, while 13 activities had higher growth rates relative to the preceding quarter. On a half-year basis, real growth in the first quarter of 2019 stood at 2.02%. That's higher than in 2018, which was 1.69%. Quarter on quarter, real GDP increased by 2.85% compared to a decline of 13.69% in the preceding quarter. Well, we'll get to dissect um, this data properly on the show um, on Wednesday. Okay, let's look at the markets now. The Nigerian equities market began the month on a positive note as the benchmark index went up by 0.14% to close at 27,425.56 points. Temple Ashaju has all the details. Hello, Temple. Good morning. Well, trading in the early hours of um, yesterday was bearish as investors sold off significantly on MTN, Dango the Cement, and Guarantee Trust Bank. However, Late interest in Nestle and um, CCNN drove the market to a positive close. What exactly happened there? Thank you, Ms. Well, as we said, uh, we opened a little bit on a bearish note. Eventually, things turned uh, positive. But for the greater part of yesterday, we saw uh, some kind of positive trend in the market. Investors are uh, uh, kind of looking at the low numbers that we've had or low prices across the, uh, counters in the market. And they took advantage of all of that. However, there was a bit of profit taking, as we said. But overall, at the end of the day, uh, we ended up gaining some 19.1 billion naira in terms of activity level. Uh, going by the sectoral performance, UBA made some gains yesterday. This is a company that is paying out 20 to 20 cowboy in dividend. Uh, some investors are taking advantage of that. Uh, Union Bank Properties also did some good gains. Uh, Zenit Bank, as I hinted, as I talked about earlier, you know, gained some 2.08%. Uh, consumer goods segment of the market, we've seen the likes of Nestle, um, Unilever, and of course, International Bridge, which has even uh, almost hit the floors in recent time. You know, experiencing some bargain hunting yesterday, and some investors are uh, swooping to take advantage of that. Industrial goods segment of the market, uh, thanks to CCNN and WAPCO, these two key companies uh, pushed up the indices yesterday. Insurance was up, and of course, oil and gas rose uh, some 0.18 percent uh, yesterday. Uh, Oando made some gains of 1.28 percent. And if we look at the energy stocks now, you see that uh, there's basically no change in the prices of. 90% uh, of the, so the stocks that you have there. Corn oil remained unchanged. Uh, 40 oil at 16 naira for the 5 cobra, in spite of the, some news that we had late yesterday that uh, the company is looking to delist from the stock exchange. Those are speculative stories, anyways. We'll wait to see how the market reacts to that uh, tomorrow because, again, uh, there's a major company that is supposed to increase its stake from 74.04% uh, now to 74.06%, uh, having uh, priced some 500,000 units of shares now for 
uh, 66 Naira plus in the markets. We'll see how investors and traders, you know, take that news uh, with implications on the stocks today. 11 PLC, nothing has changed. MRS O and Do uh, was the only one that actually gained 1.28% uh, yesterday. For Seplat, uh, we had, of course, uh, some notice from Seplat yesterday uh, talking about making some clarifications about uh, the involvement of the uh, chairman, Mr. ABC Ojako, uh, and of course the Amcon uh, 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 issue that he has that's at stake right now uh, as in relation to Sheba Exploration and Production Company and of course uh, Alin uh, Limited. Uh, these two key companies, uh, Seplatz is saying that they have nothing to do with their company because as things stand right now, as it stands right now, uh, we know that some investors are uh, weary of how this will impact on the other projects that Seplat has in Emo State. Basically, that's it with the uh, uh, energy stocks. Uh, the unlisted securities market was negative yesterday, uh, down by 0.87%. We saw only 57,754 units of shares traded on that uh, platform yesterday, and all of that took place in just eight deals. Uh, for the fixed income side of the market, bonds opened the months very, very bearish. Uh, T-bills also was really bearish. For bonds, we saw uh, firm bearish uh, sentiment there as yields rose by some 14 basis points and of course players continue to react to the hike in a one year open market operations that the CBN carried out uh, that kind of uh, weakens the bid on prices uh, yesterday especially at the short end of the curve that's why we had just 18 deals yesterday at the secondary side of the market for the treasury side of things it was really bearish as well we got a 30 basis points uh, 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 increase in the yields yesterday on the average and of course uh, we saw investors selling down at the short end of the curve because again this followed some kind of liquidity squeeze after the CBN carried out some kind of wholesale FX auction uh, yesterday Chimezi. All right, Temple, interestingly, the GDP numbers were released today. On year-on-year -year basis, it looked good, but on quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, it wasn't impressive. You have Temitope Ulubile there, uh, one of the financial uh, derivatives, uh, helping analysts with you there. I'm sure she would be able to uh, relate those numbers with the commodities market. Great. Chibizé, uh, thanks for this opportunity. Again, of course, Temitokbe, thanks a great deal for joining us on this uh, release of the Q2 2019 uh, GDP numbers, which okay. came in at 8.30 a.m. on the dots this morning from the National Bureau of Statistics. Yes. Uh, from FDC, what are you guys uh, making of these particular numbers? Okay, um, so every analyst was waiting on the number uh, was waiting on the number from the MBS, and we mm -hmm. saw that GDP in Q2 slowed to 1.94% from a revised GDP growth of 2.1 in Q1 mm -hmm. 2019. Just a quick breakdown of the report. Mm -hmm. We saw that its sectors expanded, three, con three contracted, and then mm -hmm. eight slowed. And um, a few key points well, from... Well, sorry, before you go mm -hmm. on, uh, compared to what we had in uh, Q1, how many? what's the difference, though? Um, so... Just a quick, because I haven't really had time to really break it down, but okay, the yeah, few differences we've seen, the few differences I was able to see was that, okay, so the agric was among the fastest growing in mm -hmm. Q1, but now it actually slowed quite significantly. And then okay. real estate where, that we were celebrating the last quarter mm -hmm. that is finally out of the negative territory, it's back in the negative territory. So those are a few differences. And then we've also saw that trade, mm -hmm. trade also contracted in this report. And those are some very key interest rate sensitive sectors and those are very worrying trends for us over at FDC and another thing we were able to quickly do was see if how efficient the PMI, which is a purchasing managers index, it's, a, it's supposed to be a forward-looking indicator yeah. predicting what your GDP would come out at. And we saw that in the quarter under review, which is the second quarter, we saw that there was a steady decline in the PMI, and it even fell to an, a contraction region in the last month of the quarter. And so that shows that the PMI is still a, a predictor for your GDP growth. And Speaking on the PMI, we had the release of the August figures yesterday, and we saw that FBN, according to the F, according to FBN Quest, we saw that the PMI, well, there was a mild recovery in the PMI, and okay. so so, so far, yes, yeah, so we're we're back up to into the expansion region, and we are now at fifty point nine. And that also aligns points. with what the central bank has released. Yes, yes. So, so that's a consensus, yes. basically. Finally, we have a consensus between both readings. 
with both regions, excuse me. And then what we are now seeing is that so so far in Q3, we've seen that July it was 49.5, and then now we're back up to 50.9. So you can start to get a sense of what your GDP growth would say in Q3. Mm. Yes. Okay, uh, so we've got the uh, whole US, China, mm. Uh, trade war also yes. rattling the markets. Yes. You got new US tariffs, fifteen percent, which took mm -hmm. effect a few nights ago, yes. and of course that is that is now affecting markets. Uh, so Definitely. what's the impression on that? Okay, so the US China trade war has been going on for well over a year now, and when you think that oh we're finally having an ease of the tensions they come back out with new fresh tariffs and so we saw that new tariffs took effect on Sunday I believe and we saw that the US hit China with 15 percent on their imports mm. and for the first time since the trade war started China went after ta imposed tariffs on the US crude which is a worrying trend because according to reports that's the first time we've seen an attack on the US oil since the oil since the was started. So we've already started to see companies having to pay more to build up inventories. The US companies have been affected. China Chinese companies have been affected too. So we and coupled with the fact that there's a their fears of a global recession in 2020, this is not at this is not easing any of those fears right now because we don't know what new dimension this is going to take. So we just wait and see their talks about them having um, trade talks later in this month, but we're not keeping our hopes up because when you think they're having trade talks, they come back out with fresh tariffs. So, 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 so federal government, uh, but the Nigeria's budget actually for mm. this year is uh, benchmarked at sixty dollars yes, per barrel. Yes. We've seen uh, crude oil price now falling below that. Yes. Uh, I mean, coupled with the one point nine four percent growth that we experienced mm. in Q two, I yes. mean, what what does this say about the economy? And of course, the uh, uh, prediction that mm. there's a recession looming in the global markets. Yes, yeah, so um, so Nigeria still remains oil dependent. As much as we've tried to di diversify our economy, we are doing a good job, but we're still largely oil dependent. So our oil production fell in the month of July, yes, and then now we saw that oil prices too are trading downwards below $60 per barrel. And so that gives you an idea that your quarterly oil revenue, which still accounts for at least 80% of your export revenue, yeah. is going to decline in in the quarters to come. And Nigeria, and like you said, coupled with the global recession, Nigeria has become so integrated with the global markets yeah, now so through things like FDI, FPI flows, e-commerce, social media. So we're integrated. We're not we're not, we're very vulnerable to the exogenous shocks of a global recession. We're not exempt from it. And so it's something that should worry Nigeria if there's a likelihood of a global recession. But for now, we're still, I mean, growth still came in at 1.94, but it's still suboptimal and it's not inclusive at all. Hmm. But it doesn't signal anything about recession? Not yet. I think we're still in the safe Okay, region. So there's no need to panic, actually. N not yet. <laughs> Let's look at the impacts now, the goodies and the downers. Mm -hmm. You've got eight sectors, as you explained earlier, expanding, outputs and inventories, uh, sub indices were up. Mm -hmm. Naira appreciates as uh, the iron E window uh, mm -hmm. to 362 Naira. Yes. So those are, like you just read out, those are our goodies. We saw that if you break down the PMI numbers we got for August, we saw that outputs and inventories, the sub indices, they increase, but if you go over to the downers, we saw that new orders actually declined. And according to the FBN, that's the most that's new orders is one of the key, one of the very key indices of the whole PMI index. And that is because we're approaching the holiday season soon, and that is showing that you know firms may not have tightened their plans towards getting. You know, because if you want your orders to come in by December, you should start ordering them by at least September. So we wait to see September's figures because that is a very key to show how optimistic they are about consumer demand in the holiday season. If a firm is not optimistic about the consumer demand in the peak of the holiday season, then it shows that consumer disposable income income is really on the decline. Worrisome for me when I was looking at the numbers for the Q2 GDP mm. is the fact that the uh, manufacturing sector actually contracted. Yes, is, that is, do we know what is, what is responsible for that? That, that is very worrying and 
again to the PMI. The PMI predicted that because we saw a steady decline. I, I think the manufacturers are just in need of a stimulus, like the whole economy is in need of a stimulus. Thankfully, they're yes. having their, their association, Manufacturers yes. Association of Nigeria is currently having its annual general meeting mm, in Lagos. Mm. Perhaps that's something they will so be talk about. Yeah, Let's definitely. move on to the power sector, so where we've seen average uh, power output at 3,177 uh, megawatts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, our power output, um, a, few, a few months ago, we were at least doing steady over 4,000 megawatts mm -hmm. per hour, but now we're below 4,000 megawatts per hour. And it's not any different because if you check the breakdown, you see that gas alone, gas constraints alone accounted for over 1,000 megawatts of the whole output that was generated. So that is, and again, consumers are, you know, the new, the latest news on the electricity market is the increase in the electricity tariffs that is expected next year, July 2020. And so Consumers are not really, Nigerians are not happy with the state of the electricity sector and that's nothing new but it's, it's biting Nigerians more now I would say. Mm. So uh, we we know that usually when uh, it rains or when we're in the mm. rainy season, we get to see improvement in power and uh, some other initiatives, mm. coupled with some other initiatives we're beginning to see from discos where they're yeah. beginning to implement some uh, uh, willing buyer, willing mm. seller initiative. Mm. Yeah. Is that likely to change uh, things going forward for the sector? Okay, so going to the, to the raining season, to the weather conditions, so I would say that we are slightly out of the raining season now. I mean, global warming, we can hardly predict the seasons anymore, but I would say we're out of it. So the water constraint could be on the increase again, because for a few months we saw that there was literally no water constraint. So with the rainy season over, we could see um, increased water constraint that would definitely affect the power that is generated. Mm. And um, to the initiatives by the DISCO, we're really hoping that these initiatives will increase the efficiency. I think that's the, Yes, we want more power generation, but we also want the whole system, the whole value chain from generation to distribution to transmission and to just be improved, the efficiency of it all to be improved. And that's what we're really hoping for. Right, so let's move on to domestic commodities uh, price movement. Mm. We've got Gary, we've got rice, flour. What's, what's, what's changing in this sector? Okay, so um, one burning issue that is changing is this um, border closure news of the closure of the border and the impact that it is, it is already having on some commodities. So your turkey and your chicken, frozen turkey and chicken, they are becoming very scarce. If you go to the market now, you can hardly find those in the market. So definitely it's going to have an impact on the prices. And then the rice, which is the main driver of the border closure to start with, we're already at um, 18,000 naira per bag. And if we, if that, the impact of the border closure, basically, we could go back to the one year high is currently at 22,000 naira per bag. We could even go higher than that, 22,000 naira per bag. And that's not good because, like that's I said, really we're approaching negative. the holiday season Rice is a staple. Okay, so we're wrapping up. Uh, we've got the commodity in focus as okra. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we finding in this particular sector or okay. this particular crop? Okay, so the commodity in focus okra is a very unique commodity because from it has different variations. So the fruits are what Nigerians usually consume for your soups mm -hmm. and delicacies. But you could there are other parts of the commodity that are useful. So the leaves, if you dry those out, they could even be used as a substitute for your coffee. Um, the the leaves are also um, medicinal and okay. they have there are other uses to the whole commodity in focus but nigeria has restricted itself to just the fruits and then mm -hmm. we use it as in just the household consumption of soups and delicacies and i think that it's time to move into the industrial and other uses of this commodity and that could drive the incentive to even increase the output of this commodity. So it says that Nigeria is one of the top uh, world yes. producers yes. And, and all of that. Perhaps yes. we'll start looking to that direction, as, yes, as you definitely. actually said, because again, this is something that we understand hasn't even really, really met the this global standard. agricultural practice. Yes. That's the global gap yes. uh, demands. Yes. Uh, thanks a great deal for joining okay. us. Thanks for your okay. insight on this whole uh, commodity segment of the market. Shimeza, it's back to you now. Thank you, Temple. Well, it's quite interesting to know that there are other things you can actually do with okra. I was just thinking it's just using it to cook soup. I didn't know I could actually use the leaf for my coffee or my tea. It's quite interesting to know. Well, we'll take a break now, and when we return, we'll look at the key takeaway from the just-concluded Tokyo International Conference on African Development, which took place in Japan. Do stay with us.